Welcome to this year's Meet the Candidates. My name is David Adimo. I serve as the president of the Montgomery County Regional Student Government Association, or MCR. MCR is an organization where high school student leaders can come together to collaborate, share ideas, and develop leadership skills. We also represent Montgomery County's high school students in important policy discussions at the local and state level. And in partnership with the Board of Education, we conduct the annual election for student member of the Board of Education, or SMOB. In just a moment, you'll meet this year's two candidates for student member of the board, Alex Abrasimov, a sophomore at Richard Montgomery High School, and Eric Gersey, a junior at Bethesda Chevy Chase High School. These two candidates were selected at the annual SMOB nominating convention on February 22nd at Watkins Mill High School. More than 350 student delegates from 45 middle and high schools heard speeches and answers from a field of four candidates. The convention ultimately nominated Eric Gersey and Alex Abrasimov, who will be on the general election ballot on April 27th. If you will not be at school on April 27th, you will also have the opportunity to participate in early voting. Speak with your school's SGA advisor or administration for more information. Before you meet these two candidates, it is important to understand the role of the SMOB. As numerous members of the Board of Education have agreed, the student member plays a very important role. He or she is one of eight members on the board and can vote on every matter except for the operating and capital budgets, the closing of a school, or negative personnel, the dismissal of a staff member. The SMOB still participates in discussions on those important issues. In choosing who you vote for, I urge you to consider that individual's stances on different policy issues and their ability to represent students like you on the Board of Education. Today, MCPS faces a number of challenges and opportunities. Pending approval of a final contract, we will have a new superintendent of schools before the start of the next school year. The student population is growing at an unprecedented rate. MCPS has just changed the school start time schedule and final exam policy. And we are still in the first years of implementing new Common Core education standards in our state, and soon states across the nation will deal with new changes to federal education law. This is an important task for each and every one of our 80,000 voters. Montgomery County is one of a few jurisdictions with a SMOB who is truly an equal with the other members of the Board of Education. To stay up to date on the election, go to www.mcrsga.com or like the MCR SGA page on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. The format of the discussion will be as follows. We'll have three minutes of opening statements, 10 minutes of general questions for the candidates, and six minutes of questions based on the platforms of individual candidates. Then, candidates will have four minutes to ask each other questions, and then they will present closing statements. The questions have not been shared with the candidates ahead of time. So, let's meet our candidates. Let's get started with our opening statements. We'll begin with a 90-second statement from our first candidate, Alex Abrasimov. Hey, everyone. I'm Alex Abrasimov, and I'm running for SMOB. Since we don't have much time, I will cut out the political talk and get real. Most of us, me included, did not think that the SMOB did anything to directly impact us as students, and very little change has been made. That's why I want to redefine the role of the student member. I want to be the first SMOB that helped set up a mixer dance between two high schools, the first SMOB to call out our school lunch system, and the first SMOB to tell you straight up exactly what I can do to close the systematic issue of the achievement gap. This past year, I have observed how little students' lives were impacted by actions of our past student members. And my primary purpose for running is to revolutionize the role of SMOB itself, enabling our student leaders to set up programs like I did. For example, bringing food trucks to every possible school. My campaign has been about looking at our problems from the perspective of the students, not politicians. As students, we are constantly being talked at, not with. When we start to engage more students, they will be more in sync with what happens after our SMOB is done campaigning. 
we can hold our leaders accountable and start producing visible results. I know we can't expect every student to be hip about every policy, but we can take a step back and realize that taking the same approach we always have been has had no significant impact on the achievement gap, no impact on our school lunches, and most importantly, no visible impact to the students. As SMOB, I will shatter the barriers of bureaucracy and work towards my vision of a far more united student body. Thank you. Our next opening statement will come from our, first, from our second candidate, Eric Gersey. Just a short year ago, you entrusted me with the honor of serving as your SMOB. When you elected me, we sent a clear message that you didn't want the status quo and the same old issues of a disappearing SMOB and a lack of action. You wanted real change, vibrant communication, and someone to unify our student body to achieve shared victories. Together, we have accomplished long-needed reforms to create an education that works for all of us. We eliminated final exams, delayed school start times, and improved the calendar. We made incredible progress while putting students at the center of change. That's why I'm running for another term. This election is our chance to continue our wave of momentum, to take back our education. And today, I'm asking you to believe in our shared ability to transform MCPS. Because my term as mob hasn't been about me, it's been about you, your beliefs, and your desire for tangible change. That's why I've prioritized communication, starting the small minute videos, sending out unprecedented letters, and visiting a historic number of schools to meet you personally so that our student voice is heard above all. We have come too far to turn back now. Now is the time to secure more victories for our student body, to continue to elevate the student voice, expand technology, and ensure that all of us have the opportunities to succeed in our great county. Together, let's keep moving MCPS forward. Thank you. Let's get started with our questions. I will first ask my question to Eric, who will have 30 seconds to respond, and then Alex will have 30 seconds to respond as well. Our first question is, what issue are you most passionate about, and what specific steps will you take to improve it? My term as SMOB has been all about empowering the student voice, because we know that when the student voice is strong, our county is strong. And when our county is strong, that means that we're tackling issues like closing the achievement gap, expanding open lunch, and ensuring that students have after-school activities that suit their individual needs. That's why every single day I go out into the community and speak with students, face-to-face, -face, through town halls, in efforts to increase the power of the student voice so that as students, we are at the center of our school system. Thank you. Alex? I think the most important issue facing us right now is the lack of student voice. We cannot solve any problem in our county without having student input. At our school and in many other schools, I have created a student union with hundreds of members, which has largely been successful. It has had clear and real impacts on the student body, and I will continue this as my next mob. We need to empower SGAs legitimately and get, keep them accountable for their actions so that we don't see a pattern of SGAs not being involved every day with what our students really want. Thank you. Our next question will be answered first by Alex. Many students in our county suffer from depression, anxiety, and related mental health issues. How can the system better support these students? Well, first of all, we need to train our teachers and staff to understand the signs of mental anxiety, mental depression, and other mental illnesses. There's a bill currently going through the Maryland House of Representatives that will help fund these measures, and I'm in full support of it. Also, I believe that the students themselves need to understand the severity of these issues, and I'll work tirelessly to expand the advocacy and awareness of these issues as SMOB. Eric? As SMOB, mental health has been something that I've been proud to champion for you. We all know how hard it is to have access to our counselors when we need them. There's often long waits to get to our counselors, or they say, I can't see you right now. Something that I was proud to champion on behalf of you was $45 million extra dollars in our budget to increase the number of counselors and school psychologists in our schools so that we have the access and support to the services that students need. And we shouldn't be ignoring mental health issues because if we're not mentally right, then we're not going to be succeeding in the classroom every single day. And we need all of our students to be both met well mentally and to succeed in the classroom. Thank you. Our next question. Student achievement differs by race, income, and geographic location. What should we do to narrow the achievement gap? In MCPS, we are often considered one of the best educational systems in the country. However, the growing achievement gap between white and Asian students and African-American and Latino students is a stain on our record of excellence. 
But the achievement gap isn't only racial, it's also socioeconomic, and too many students who don't have the funds at home to support themselves are being left behind. Make no mistake, every single year that the achievement gap is growing, we are failing too many of our students. As SMOB, I will continue to lead a coalition of students, staff, and parents to combat the achievement gap with real and lasting solutions. I'm also proud to have championed with the Minority Scholars Program, which is a great program that has Thank access you. to student leaders tackling the achievement gap in our schools. Thank you, Eric. Alex? You know, I'll be completely real. If given the same opportunities, students of every race in all walks of life achieve very similarly. This is a systematic problem that goes beyond half measures. We cannot, do, we cannot chip away at the corners of this problem. We need to solve things from the bottom up. Our district lines are drawn with complete disregard, and we need to change that. We need to create a task force of every single student possible to champion this, and I will do it as your next mob. I will not just do half measures. I will take the fight straight to the root of the problem. Thank you. Our next question starts with Alex. Do you support the changes to final exams that are going into effect next school year? Why or why not? I support any cuts to testing because I believe that students should not be taught to the test, and I think that students need to be taught by an individual approach. That being said, I think that the initiatives were not communicated to the students well, and the students who were relying on exams and were studying for them were not, were not taken into account properly. I also think that the option chosen with the two exams every semester as opposed to one was not the correct path forward. That being said, once again, testing should be greatly reduced. Eric? This year, as your SMOB, one of the big initiatives that we worked on together was to reduce testing in our classroom, to create a system where we are not numbers, but we are innovators. And as SMOB, what I did was I reached out to you through social media, through my new website, smoberic.com, which had forums, to engage students in the decision-making process centered around this final exams. But what I'm most, most committed to doing in these upcoming months is creating a grading system that works for us. The current grading system, which I've had held roundtable discussions about, is a system where if you go A, B in a class or B, A in a class, then you would get an A in that class so that every Thank student you, can have a friendly grading system in our schools. Thank you. The next question, how would you engage students, especially underrepresented groups, in discussions about the education system? The SMOB is not just the representative of a, few, of a few students, whether in the SGA or in any other group in their school. The SMOB is the representative of every student, regardless of race, background, or socioeconomic status. That's why, as your SMOB, I have been the champion of students of all backgrounds, all races, and all desires. And what I'm doing that is through going out to your schools, talking with you one-on-one -on -one in your classroom or in the hallway to discuss the issues which matter to you and to get things done for our student body. Alex? This year, we heard a lot of talk. Admittedly, polished and good talk, but not a lot of action. There's a big difference between political talk and real, concise, and clear action on these problems. I will actually discuss these problems with the students and empower student leaders locally at each SGA to take things from the bottom up and create a movement as opposed to do, doing the top-down approach that we have seen this year. What issues do you think are not discussed enough in MCPS, and how would you address them? Well, I think the issues that are not discussed are the systematic ones. We can cut around the corners for some things. We can, you know, discuss issues like achievement gap, but we're not dig deep enough to find the root of the problem. I will dig deep and I will make a task force of every single student possible to let out a, to let out a clear path forward instead of just doing half measures. Eric? Too often in our daily school lives, things that can seem so small have such a big impact on our daily experience. That means things like toilet paper that's too thin or water fountains that don't work. That's why I care about every single one of your concerns, big or small, as I go out into the community and look at these problems in your schools. I fought for a two-ply solution on toilet paper, for example, or to improve school lunches and to get sensors so that you can use your water bottle and put it under a water fountain to improve the quality of the little things that will make our experience in school that much better. Thank you. Thank you. How do you think we can improve extracurricular activities in schools across the county, especially for schools with fewer resources? Whatever our passion is, whether it's arts, humanities, athletics, all of us should have the, potential, have the ability to fulfill our potential in these fields. This is often what drives us to go to school every day, empowered with these opportunities. And as your SMOB, I've been out in your schools and I want to continue to be out in your schools to understand the individual interests so that we can tailor after school and extracurricular programs to your school, your wants, and your desires. Thank you. Alex? Well, we need to fund them, of course. 
If our programs aren't funded the way that the students need them, not the way we arbitrarily decided to fund them, then we cannot have real progress. We need to change the way we fund things and impose a grant program instead of funding things however we want. We need to fund things based on the students' needs and we need to do it from the bottom up locally instead of doing a one-size-fits-all, top-down approach. What, if any, policies do you think are most problematic in MCPS and how do you think we should address or change them? The top-down approach to students' needs and to student advocacy. I believe that the students have many great things to say and I think that education is primarily geared towards us. This is our future and we need to be able to voice it. And we're being, when we are discouraged every day by adults in our county and told that we cannot speak our mind because of arbitrary rules set in place, then we can never tr have true pro progress and a true movement. I want to create a real movement and that's how I'm going to solve this issue. Eric? There are certainly some issues in our county and some policies that can be affected right away. For example, we're often placed emphasis on AP, IB testing, SAT, and ACT testing. Something that I want to adopt from other counties is making all of these programs free for students who are often being held back because of the extraordinary cost that these tests inflict. We also need to look at testing as a whole and workload and reduce testing and workload because in too many schools, too many students are overburdened with these necessities, and but, but also these strains on our lives as everyday students. Thank you. What do you think of having school resource officers in our schools? We need to create a school system where we feel safe in our schools. And student school resource officers play an integral role in this aspect of our school lives. However, it's not only at schools, but it's also on things like the Wi-Fi networks, which need to be improved. But at the same time, we're not sure if on the Wi-Fi networks, if we're texting or Snapchatting or using Instagram, if that data can be seized. So it's creating a culture of safety, not only on the ground, but also in the 21st century world that we live in today. Thank you. Alex? We need to keep our schools safe. I 100% agree. We also need to make sure these officers are sensitive to the issues that the students care about, whether it be racial issues or socioeconomic. We need to make sure these officers have the proper training, especially in the light of the things we have seen in the past year. We need to make sure that these officers are ready to work with the students, not just at them. Thank you. Thank you. Many student members of the board have created new initiatives outside of their official duties as a board member. As SMOB, what kinds of additional projects would you develop? Well, I already have created a lot of projects on the side. I created a student union with hundreds of members. And in January, if many of you can remember, there was a snowstorm, and I created a petition that got over 10,300 students to sign it. It was a movement. It was a true movement to get things moving in our county. Because when 10,000 students agree on something, that means there needs to be something changed. And I'm going to fight for that on the side and a smob forever. As SMOB, I've created some powerful initiatives this year, like the SMOB Minute and going out and multiplying the number of student town halls. However, we must continue to do more with communication, which is why I want to create an app or a portal on the Google Classroom so you can connect with me, and also create an app on your mobile device because we know that we're living in a mobile world today. It's also important to understand the grassroots concerns of every single one of your schools, and I'll continue to be in your schools planning school visits to every school to accomplish the goals that you want to see in your schools. Thank you. Thank you. Our next section are questions that are based specifically on what candidates have said and uh, placed in their election platforms. We're going to begin with a question directed toward Eric. Eric, you've mentioned getting turf field funding for every high school many times during your campaign. How would you respond to the concern that this money should go toward programs that affect a wider range of students? We have over 33,000 student athletes in our program, each of these students holding dear their performance on the field or on the court. These are extracurricular activities that impassion our students to go to school every single day. But we're never deciding the way that the budgets are set up in MCPS between hiring a teacher or building a field and rebuilding a school. So I'm also committed not only to athletes, but also artists, humanities students. Every student, every walk of life deserves to have your extracurricular program funded in your school. Alex, you have 30 seconds to respond. I agree. We need to focus on every single student. That's why I believe that this funding is greatly misguided. Instead of turf fields, which have many inherent problems with them, why don't we build something for our athletes like a state-of-the-art weight room with treadmills and everything so that students with lower income can enjoy them as well instead of buying a gym membership? We have to make priorities. And when there are schools like Damascus and schools in the Down County Consortium with Kennedy and middle schools that are literally falling apart, 
I think we have to set our priorities clear. Thank you. Alex, you've mentioned food trucks frequently while campaigning. How do you think we can help our significant student population that relies on free and reduced meals? Well, food trucks actually help students on free and reduced meals greatly. This is for the reason that food trucks, first of all, decongest the lunch room. Second of all, they bring better quality and less expensive lunches to the students right up to the school. And third of all, I think that school lunches are a moral issue, and we should not be feeding our students who depend on these lunches from free and reduced meals the quality of the food that we have been feeding them over the past several years. It is completely unacceptable, and our school lunches need to be greatly reformed. Eric, you have 30 seconds. I'm also committed to reforming school lunch, but I haven't just talked about it, I've taken action for you. Meeting with the people who have a direct impact on the quality of your school lunches, and as in the next few months we unroll a plan to greatly revolutionize these school lunches. It's also important to understand with the way that the legislative system is set up that right now food trucks at our schools are illegal. But I'm working with the state legislature and with the county council, the people who actually write the laws on these issues, to make them a reality in every single school. Thank you. Eric, you frequently mentioned individualizing education for students as well as defining students beyond numbers. As SMOB, what specific steps would you take to accomplish this? We know that when we're overburdened with homework and testing, that we're often defined by numbers and looking at our grades or our SAT scores. We want to be defined by our ability to lead and learn in our school system. That's why I'm committed to continuing to cut down on testing, like the park testing, to minimize it to the extent possible, if not completely eliminate it in the state of Maryland. I'm also committed to working with our teachers to look at the way that, we evaluate, that they evaluate us and that we evaluate them because we're the ones who understand the impacts that our teachers have in the classroom and they understand the impact that we're able to learn every single day. Thank you. Alex? We need to greatly reduce testing, greatly reduce homework burdens on our students, especially students from middle school and early stages of high school because that was, those are the vital years when we have individualized ourselves into education. But this year, we saw a top-down approach. One size fits all does not work, and I will revolutionize that. I will make everything catered directly to the students, as I have already done in the past at my school. Thank you. Thank you. Alex, you've mentioned that school district lines create de facto segregation. As SMOB, how do you think you can improve this situation? Well, look at our district lines. They're drawn pretty arbitrarily. We have a down county consortium, a big lump of schools, a northeastern consortium. Some of our s districts are basically like Gaithersburg or Seneca Valley. They stretch from all the way from the top to the bottom of Montgomery County, having great times of commute. I believe we need a task force to look at these issues and say, look, we need to simplify these maps. We need to make them as simple as possible so that students can have a diverse area where they go to school and a diverse student population so that they can actually achieve well. Eric? I too am committed to ensuring that every single student can achieve in our county and is allowed to uh, be in a school environment that works for every single one of them and that is diverse. <coughs> However, I don't, I'm not in favor of moving students out of their schools, moving them to other schools to solve problems. I'm in favor of working with you and your schools, the individual needs of every single one of your schools to understand how we can improve the culture of that individual school, not moving people around and, and looking at how we can move students from one school to another school. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll hear closing statements from our two candidates. We'll start off with Eric Gersey. Next year, the challenges will be steep. With a new superintendent and millions of dollars of athletics, arts, and extracurricular funding at stake, you deserve a SMOB who doesn't shy away from challenges, but tackles them head on. We'll rise together because we believe that whatever our background, wherever we come from, we can achieve anything. I've fought tirelessly for you at the board table, but more importantly, I know what it means to be an everyday student just like you. This year, your voice have, has been my voice. Your priorities have been my priorities. And every one of your concerns, big or small, matters to me. And I won't stop fighting until we get middle schoolers the right to use their cell phones during improved school lunches, implement a bring your own device program in every school, and continue to reduce testing and homework. If you want a SMOB who cares about what you have to say, who fights for you at the board table, and who is in your schools working with you to take our student voice to the top, then I ask for your vote so we can continue our wave of momentum of progress together. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Alex? All right, now let's get real. I'm honored to be here today to share my vision that has already started to turn into reality. Every week, several food trucks come near our school during lunch to serve improved, better priced lunches to the students that help everyone. I've also helped implement these programs at other schools. 
It has been done, and it will be expanded to the county level if I am SMOB. Second, I started a student union with hundreds of members to fight for the student's voice from the bottom up. We have seen a lot of talking this year, most of it at us. Now, it's time for us to be heard. I am confident in my ability to organize a movement. Many of you may remember the snowstorm in January. As you may know, my petition that week to close schools because of hazards got about 10,300 people supporting it. When we say things like expanding student voice, we have to mean them. It's a little deeper than running around from meeting to meeting and claiming to care about a student's problems. The real challenge of SMOB is never forgetting the student part of your title. And I promise, I promise that I won't. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce Ratchet Agrawal. Ratchet is a special elections administrator for the Montgomery County Regional Student Government Association. Hi, my name is Ratchet Agarwal and I'm the Special Elections Administrator for MCR, the countywide student government. This year, we made significant changes to the election, including more strictly enforced campaign spending rules to increase fairness and a more interactive debate on Meet the Candidates. Hopefully, you enjoyed this debate's style better than that of previous mob discussions. If you have any comments or questions about the election process, please let us know at mcrsga.com. The two candidates you just heard from want to represent you on the Montgomery P County Board of Education. This is the election of a public official, so I urge you to take this election very seriously. All middle and high school students are eligible and encouraged to vote, even those with second semester senioritis like me. Exercising your right to vote is a major key to success. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alicia Delon, and I would love to be your SGA president. I have seen Wooten change so much these past years, from the recent outbreak in indoor soccer, to the change in school start times, and of course, beating Churchill by a little bit, so now a lot. But one thing that remains unwavering in this school is our ability to get back up despite everything we've been through. We have leaned on each other through the good times and the bad, and we've come out stronger because of that. I have learned the Wooten community strives best when we stand together. In the past, SGA has been criticized for not reaching enough of the population, and I agree. As president, I will make sure everyone has the opportunity to be heard. From my three years at Wooten, I have learned that all students, from the brainiacs, athletes, goofballs, and everyone in between, has something important to offer to our school. I want all of your voices to be heard. Yes, even if it includes hearing how much you disliked Serial as a Homecoming team. I've been on SGA since sophomore year and have worked closely with the officers to know I have the dedication and passion to, serve, to properly serve as your president. I will put this school above everything and will give 110% into making Wooten even better than it already is. I've gone to staff personally and pushed for projects like getting music in the hallways every Friday and having a spring pep rally. The Wooten family has been there for me and made me into who I am, and for that reason, as cheesy as it may sound, I would love to be able to give back to you. This school means the world to me, so vote Alicia so I can make us even more proud to be Wooten Strong. Hello fellow Wooten students. As many of you may know, my name is Justin Pikosh and I will be running for president of the Student Government Association. Wooten is a great school and deserves a great president, and I know I will be able to fulfill that role. I am experienced in SGA as I have been a member since my sophomore year. But more importantly, I am here to serve the whole student body. I aspire to make Wooten an even better school and will always be available to talk to any student about their opinions of the school, whether I know you or I'm going to know you. I will strive to have the input of all groups of people, whether you into the arts, athletics, academics, or none of the above. As SGA president, I will work tirelessly to ensure the fact that our school has the best year possible, no matter if you are a senior or a freshman. Another goal of mine as president is to increase school spirit. I've already been chosen president of next year's barbecue club and plan on making the barbecues more fun than they have ever been before. Since the majority of our school is in this club, this will be a great way to increase our school's unity and spirit. So as I conclude, I encourage you to vote for me as I'll be a great president. And like always, Wooten, have a great day. Hi. I'm Charlie Eichberg and I am running for Vice President of the Student Government Association. As some of you may know, I am running unopposed, meaning I am the only person running for this position. 
While some people might take this opportunity to sit back and presume victory while putting in the minimal amount of work, that is the exact opposite of what I plan to do. I am actually using this opportunity to go above and beyond as vice president to prove a, that I am deserving of this position, not just because my name is the only one on the ballot. I am currently one of three kids in the junior class that has been on SGA since the end of my freshman year. I know the system, I have worked hard, and I believe that my combination of experience and effort make me the ideal candidate to represent the Wooten student body. Along with SGA, I participate in several other school activities such as newspaper, sports, and National Honor Society. Having met so many different groups of people through these activities has allowed me to make a lot of connections that will help me represent the student body thoroughly. Thank you for your confidence in me as a leader with your vote. Next year is going to be a great one. Thank you. Hi, Wooten. My name is Georgia Bartels Newton. I am a junior, and I would be honored to serve as your SGA treasurer for the 2016-2017 school year. As you can see on your ballot, I'm the only candidate running for this position, so thank you in advance for your support. But I want you all to know that I take every single one of your votes very seriously. I am here to be your representative. As treasurer, one of my most important jobs is to handle the money that is used for all the projects the SGA will take on. Over the past year, I have shadowed the current treasurer on major projects, like all the purchases for homecoming, spirit days, and the spring project. I have complete confidence that I will come in every day ready to work to the best of my abilities. In addition, simply being an officer, I have a whole new responsibility to be a leader that I'm thrilled to take on. Some of you may already know me, and some of you may be seeing my face for the first time right now. But my goal for the next year is that every single student here at Wooten, freshman or senior, feels as if they can come to me to express their wants, needs, and concerns. The beautiful thing about Wooten is that we are a medley of different backgrounds, different passions, and most importantly, different voices. I believe every voice here deserves to be heard. Whether it's setting up a meeting with the SGA, coming in to talk to me in person, or even sliding into my DMs or my Facebook messages, I want you to share your opinions with me, good or bad. My goal is to make Wooten a community in which every person feels safe, appreciated, and happy to come to school every day. I want to leave Wooten feeling that it is even better than when I came into it. Thank you for your time, your vote, and for your spirit. Go Patriots! Good morning, my fellow Wooten students. My name is Abby McCann, and I am running to be your student government secretary for the upcoming school year. Although I've only been on SGA since the beginning of junior year, I believe I would make an excellent representative of the student body. Throughout my years spent at Wooten thus far, I have participated in a wide range of extracurricular activities, varying from sports teams to academic clubs, and therefore fully understand the different needs and interests of my peers. If elected, I promise to promote positive change within the Wooten school environment and advocate for your wishes. Thank you, and remember to vote me, Abby McCann, for SGA Secretary. Hello, I'm Adrian Guerra, and I'm running for class president. I'm running for the specific reason that I believe I can do more for our class. Our class lacks school spirit, and even I'm at fault at times. But together, we can change that habit and move on to successfully make our class events fun and worth going to. We should make our fundraisers actually fun. I honestly believe we can do better than an occasional bake sale. My qualifications are pretty legit, considering the fact I have over 300 real followers on Instagram, and I'm a plat one in League of Legends. I can also make people occasionally laugh, so I have that going for me. Before you vote, follow me on Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat at KidNick44. Go green, thank you. Hi, my name is Julian Levin. Some of you may know me as your sophomore class president, and now I am running to be your junior class president. Each one of us is special and unique in our own ways. Each one of us has different interests, talents, and voices to contribute. I view our differences as an asset, a definite advantage. With such differences, we form a strong community, the class of 2018. We all have a vital role to play. It requires strong and positive leadership to embrace our differences and come together as a unified class. Next year, we will continue doing so. We have had two great years as a class. As rising upperclassmen, the best is yet to come. 
There's so much to look forward to. Poth, homecoming, junior banquet, SATs, powder puff, and class fundraisers. What do I bring to the table? As your junior class president, I offer you my good ideas, hard work, and dedication to our class. I will listen to your ideas, suggestions, and concerns, and will work to implement them. I will continue to fight for the things that are important to our students, no matter how big or small they may be. I will introduce ideas for class events and fundraisers to make our upper class years fun and memorable. I am experienced in working with the school administration and getting things accomplished. So, if you want a dependable leader, and you want a listening ear, and you want a hardworking person to represent you, and you want the best junior year, then please vote for me, Julian, for junior class president. I promise to lead our class of 2018 down the path of success. It would be an honor and pleasure to represent you again. Together, we can make Wooten even better. Thank you. From the first day I arrived at Wooten High School, I knew I wanted to become more involved. From serving on the class of 2018's planning committee to graduating from the Rockville Leadership Academy, I have taken on leadership roles both inside and outside of Wooten. Because of this, it probably won't surprise you that I, Maxwell Redding, have decided to run for the role of vice president. As vice president of our class, I will strive to make improvements in the school for every student in the class of 2018. We, every day, we all go through our own day-to-day -day routine. With just two years left here at Wooten, it is crucial for us to come together as a class. We are all looking forward to the upcoming events of our last two years of high school. For example, junior banquet, senior prom, homecoming, and graduation. The reality is that with these events comes a lot of personal expenses. One of my goals as your class's vice president will be to reduce some of the personal and class expenses. As your vice president, I will create more exciting ways to raise our funds for our class while bringing everyone together to do so. I would like to make ordinary fundraising fun. Things like competition days, tournaments, and other events that will make our class want to participate. By doing these types of fundraisers, we will not only be raising the money we need, but we will also grow together as a class. However, I will not be able to accomplish these things alone. I need your help and your vote to make this happen. So I leave you with this. Vote not for popularity or for friendship, but vote for the better choice. Vote for Maxwell Redding. Hello class of 2018. As Babe Ruth, one of the greatest baseball players of all time, once said, the way a team plays as a whole determines its success. In my eyes, Wooten High School is a team made up of our teachers, students, parents, administrators, and is in need of a strong leader to help guide us towards success. We have to work together in order to achieve the goals that are best for us. I believe your next vice president should be someone who is a good team player. I've had lots of experience working with teams that will help me to better help you. Whether it's track or basketball or soccer, I have learned to connect with everyone to make sure we are a well-functioning team. This means I need to be able to work well with others, listen to everyone's ideas, and be supportive of everyone's needs and opinions. As your next vice president, I will listen to every idea, good or bad, without passing judgment, as we're working really hard to find solutions to all sorts of problems. Also, I would work closely with the president and the rest of the student council to prioritize the needs of the students in order to create relevant agenda items for our meetings. Finally, I would keep a close eye on the rest of the student body to make sure everything's running smoothly. To conclude, I would like to say communication, collaboration, and contemplation are the three C's to success here at Wooten High School. If you want a breakthrough with Drew, then vote for me for Vice President, Drew Schrager. Thank you, Class of 2018. Hello, everyone. I'm your current Vice President of Class of 2018, Forrest Wu. During my term so far, many amazing things have happened. With a small loan of $1,000 from the seniors last year, we've raised more than $500 for our class. We won Powder Puff, and Leonardo DiCaprio also got his first Oscar. In all seriousness, I believe the three most important aspects of being a class officer is dedication, imagination, and school spirit. Of all the other candidates for vice president, I've contributed the most time and effort to helping our class over these two years. Secondly, I have imagination. For example, I dreamt that the entire school was on fire, and I just rescued every single student. Does that make me a hero? Not really. But the point is that no one caught on fire in real life, and I think that's what people look for in a class officer. Well, you ask why is imagination so crucial? Because Albert Einstein once said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Now, just because I agree with Albert Einstein in one issue, does it make me as smart as him? Yes. Lastly, as a true Wooten patriot, I also make sure to see our class colors, both in school, and on the road. Now that I have my learner's permit, 
I often find red and blue lights constantly flashing behind me. So if you want a good vice president, you better vote for Forrest the moment you walk in. You better never let it go. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to vote. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Thank you. Hi, I'm Deanna Schaefer, your class treasurer, and I want to continue to be your treasurer for the 2016-2017 school year. This past year, I have helped our class improve and succeed in many ways. We have had a lot more participation in all our big fundraisers and events. We also designed and sold amazing class t-shirts, did a great job decorating our hallway and float for homecoming, and organized a fantastic and fun POTS performance. We recently had an amazing bake sale that raised a lot of money and got so many people involved. And we have a few upcoming fundraisers that we hope will be just as successful. While our class spirit has significantly improved from last year, I know we can do even better. My goal is to get more people involved in all our class events so we can show the other classes how great we truly are and have fun while doing it. We have so much potential, we just need to work together to reach it. I know that with your help next year, we can win POTH, dominate the homecoming events, and raise the money we need for future events like Junior Banquet. If you vote for me, I will communicate with everyone to encourage the most participation possible, and I will listen to your ideas and lead the way toward further success. If you want to see our class rise above the others and become the best we can be, then vote for me, Deanna Schaefer, for your class treasurer. Hello, class of 2018. My name is Alex Terskin, and I am running for treasurer. Today, I would like to talk with you all about money. Money is power. Money is strength. Money is what made our country the way it is now. I don't like to brag, but I can count. I can count to over 1,000, which obviously makes me good with money. I am also a plat one in League of Legends, which means that calculating money is totally my thing. Starting with the new agenda, class of, we, class of 2018, will become juniors next year. And I want that year to be the most memorable of all. To make this happen, I will host various and successful fundraisers so that our class becomes the richest and will have the best junior banquet in years. I also want to bring our class closer together in order to combine everyone's ideas so that our fundraisers, dances, and end of the year celebrations will be fun and exciting. And of course, take everyone by surprise and show them that our class is every bit as awesome as we know we are. But my current goal at the, this point is to save up enough money so that our senior prom would be spectacular and even better than Churchill's. But most importantly, for next year, I strive to open up a League of Legends gaming room. When asking yourself, who would DJ Khaled vote for, a major key or day? Thank you. This is Alex T. signing out. Go Green. Deuces. Hi, my name is Kara and I am running for treasurer of class of 2018. It is a treasurer's responsibility to help with finance and plan the budget. If elected, I promise to represent our class and ensure the money is spent properly for important events like homecoming and others. Let's make this year a great one. Many of you guys already know me, so I'll keep this short and simple. Hi, my name is Young Kim, and I'm running for class secretary. I know you guys might think this, ma this election doesn't matter, but please keep in mind that next year is our junior year. We have many important events next year that have to be planned out carefully, such as junior banquet. I was an active part of 9th and 10th grade planning from the start. I've been to the events, I've helped plan them, so I know what has to be done. My opponent, on the other hand, doesn't have the same amount of experience that I do. Make the right choice and vote for me, because at the end of the day, it isn't a joke. It's going to affect how next year's events are going to be run, and we need someone who understands what they are doing. Hello, everyone. I'm Ray Lu, and I would like to be your class secretary of Class of 2018. The reason that I'm the best choice is because of three parts. First, I'm a team player. I have lots of experience of working with other people. For example, just ask my lacrosse team fellows. They'll probably tell you that I am the best bench warmer on the team. No offense. And secretary 
is responsible for working with other people to plan or decide things. That's exactly what I was born for. Also, I have an extremely good personality. I don't roast people at all. For example, there was that one random guy, and every time I see him, he just keep telling me to drop out of race, drop out of race, drop out of race. Even under that type of situation, I don't roast him back. It just shows how friendly I am. Secretary is also responsible for helping people out. With my friendly personality, people can work with me easier than that random guy. Last but not least, I do have previous experience. I was an official SGA member when I was in Chinese International School. But guys, don't tie me with communism. If I got elected, I'm not going to be the class master or something. I'm going to be the class servant and do my best to make our school life more colorful. Guys, junior year is pretty tough. But I believe if we all work together, we can make it wonderful, amazing, and awesome. Better school life, you deserve it. Thank you very much.